Welcome to Canon City Comic Club, a weekly examination of the most memorable storylines in comic books. I am your host, Tristan Cooper, also known as the god of seamless intros. Also here today, Andrew Bridgman. Hey, Tristan. I am a guy who is made out of clay, and that explains why my body is the way it is. Okay. Same. Same. It me. Uh, also <laughs> here today, uh, Carolyn Page. Hello. Hello. I am... Um, just an aspiring songstress. Okay. With my gal group. Mm-hmm. My gal Godot group, if oh, you will. Oh, okay. Ooh. Much better. Yeah. There we go. We brought it home. We circled back. Ew. Today we are reading uh, The Legend of Wonder Woman by Renee DeLiz and Ray Dillon. Uh, it was a uh, 2016, uh, I believe it started in 2015, digital series that was then converted to uh, graphic no- novel format. It is technically volume one origins. There is no volume two, and I don't think there ever will be. There's uh, kind of some... uh, Some bad blood. Some behind the scenes drama (laughs) slash Twitter beefs slash uh, some awkward cancellations. Wait, is there Twitter beefs? There was some... Really? I mean, I I don't want to get too much into the nitty gritty here because uh, a lot of it... Basically, there's some, <laughs> I'm there sorry. were some, I have there were some tweet the the book seemed to be doing very well. It was written by Donald Trump. So, written by Donald. Know, he has Donald. Some, he has some problems on Twitter. So. Yeah, can't. We all know he can't write. Uh, it's yeah. Donald Trump. <laughs> to be fair, it's, it is Don Jr. Oh, okay. So it's even he's, more. He's probably uh, also not good at Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I've seen it. Mm. You follow him? Uh, I just remember that time he released incriminating evidence against himself. Yeah, on see, that, that's good. That's being good at Twitter, okay? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. No, that's fair. Uh, so, um, that's just good. Now that's that good we've engagement. Got, now that we've got our Trump minute uh, out of the way. <laughs> Wait, I want to hear today. about the beef between them. Sure. I didn't, um, I didn't look this up. I, again, the, it was the, specifically the colorist, I think. The yeah, the, the it husband. Is, yeah, it is a husband and husband wife, wife team. team. Um, uh, the husband Ray Dillon does uh, the coloring and inking for the book, I believe. Um, and uh, he just was unhappy about another Wonder Woman book that came out that was scheduled to come out that was similar to a pitch mm. uh, uh-huh. that they had both uh, wanted to do about it, the prequels. I think it was a prequel with the Amazons. And uh, DC came out and said, hey, you know, this was a separate team, separate uh, ed- editors. They didn't know about either pitch. It was just a coincidence. Um, but Ooh, also... That, that happened at Marvel, too, recently with uh, Jim Starlin. Yes. He was going to do a big Thanos book. And then they were like, hey, we accidentally approved another story that's the same. Sorry. Yeah. That, I mean, that's... Yeah. A lot of whoopsies these days. That that stuff can happen, uh, but, you know... Uh, kind of better project deal, management, i The I'd big say. deal was, like, basically DC was like, uh, you know what? We're just kind of, kind of like, do this. And, like, some, you know, depending on, like, what, where you read that this was a long time coming or this was very sudden, um, it... It's not super clear, but the real bummer is that we don't get a volume two because volume one is very good. It sets a lot of stuff up. So good. It's a, it's a, it sets a lot of stuff up. I like the uh, incarnations, a lot of the characters, especially at a candy. Uh, we are going to skip what we call continuity catch up this week because uh, usually we like to give a lot of background on the character and where we are. But like this is like just an origin story yeah. of Wonder Woman, so we don't really need much. If you've even if you've like seen the movie, like that's like more than enough. Yeah, the, whole, the continuity ketchup would go back to the very formation of the stars and the heavens. I mean, the seas, the brutal ocean. It does kind of start there, yes. right? Yeah, we could yes. get right into the book breakdown if you want. <laughs> Let's well, one, do that. One thing that's nice about this that DC's been doing lately is just retelling their stories in like a nice, smooth, sure. like streamlined sure. way. So smooth, so smooth that's and silky. Like, yeah, it's silky, silky smooth, like Wonder Woman's hair. Oh my god, her hair is beautiful. Oh god. Uh, but like, there is like a really convoluted original story that they keep retconning, and it was nice to just have like, okay, here's a retelling. It's simple. It makes sense. It's good. Yeah, and it does still keep. There's a lot to do on Themyscira, the the island that is formed like later on by like the Greek pantheon of gods, mm-hmm. uh, and Zeus and Ares and Hades. They're all there. All your favorites. Oh man! All your favorites are there. But the story really kicks off when um, Hippolyta, I think it is. Mm-hmm. Let's go with that. Okay. Uh, I know I saw the movie and I forget how to pronounce some of these names. I apologize. I'll do my best here. Uh, basically, uh, before previously, like Wonder Woman was made out of clay by Zeus, 
But here yeah. she just sort of like appears on the beach out of sand. She's still made out of clay, they say. But yeah, she just okay. kind of like pops up. That beach clay. That yeah, beach clay. that good yeah. beach clay. I, I don't know what the beaches I are made out of. I hate when I'm like suntanning at the beach and I get all this clay in my underpants and stuff. Yeah. You know, I had a bunch of clay in my crack and, and that's that's no listen, good for anyone. Yeah. Listen, you don't know what the geography of the mascara is, okay? I don't. Okay? I don't. Right? That's fair. That's very fair. They got Pegasus there. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, like, maybe a good third of this book, which is, like, pretty lengthy, is set on Themyscira and, like, young Wonder yeah. Woman growing up with a uh, mentor, uh, Al Sippy. We're going to go with that. Al Alcipe. Alcipe. Al Chippy could be. I don't think it's Al It's a hard ch. I don't think it's a ch. I'm going to say Al for short. Let's call her Al. Let's call her Al. You can um, call me Al. And I thought she was a very cool... Uh, <laughs> She was a very cool mentor figure who had this like kind of like very understandable beef with Wonder Woman herself because yeah. she sees uh, uh, Diana as like this like weak like Achilles heel of Hippolyta because Hippolyta is immortal and and Wonder Woman Diana is not yeah. and she sees like says well obviously when Wonder Woman grows old and dies like that attachment is gonna break our leader Hippolyta. And like, uh, you shouldn't exist, basically. <laughs> well, what if she got a new clay baby, though? Okay, yeah. You just keep getting clay babies. That's what good to you, go. That's what you do. You just get a new baby. Yeah, and everything what, is when fine. You when you're sad about one. something, just get a new one. Like, yeah. <laughs> no, Especially Come on. a baby. It's like babies, so replaceable. Yeah, there's like a million babies in the world. So there's just, like just grab another one. A million babies. It's like basically like Apple Care, yeah. right? It's just like yeah. you just get a new it's iPad. Like, or you know, whatever. I can't replace it myself, but I send it away. Yeah. And then they fix it. They give me some new clay. It, it all it I works. mean, they don't they fix it. They just give you a new one, right? Listen, I don't know what happens there. I don't want to know. <laughs> and all your iPhones go to a farm upstate. Yeah. Yeah, they're taken care of. They all my off. apps are still there. I don't want anything to happen to my apps. All, all the, f all <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the iPhones go to a farm upstate where they are dumped and uh, and the, all of their al alkaline like leaks out of their batteries and into the earth. And they're free though too. And then they and it goes back into the atmosphere. And <laughs> Wouldn't it be good if there was like one farm that had all the dogs? Like none of our parents were lying, and just this hellscape, just overridden with dogs. I think just feral dogs everywhere. <laughs> I think John Stewart literally has a uh, not in John Stewart the Green Lantern. John Stewart, The Daily Show. John Stewart has also a farm of dogs. Oh, that's cool. So that's John Stewart's nice. the guy who runs that that farm. Yes, that's yes. cool. That's uh, his life know. must be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's just I, thousands of dogs roaming I his mean, property. Look, they've gone He's, feral. They have to children go feral. are not welcome there. No, they'll eat the chip. They'll eat the kids. <laughs> Any baby that goes there is dead. They finally made. He finally made good on that promise of dogs of, of that dog farm. Like going to the shelter and saying, "I want to adopt all of them." He did. He did it all. Well, good for him. Um, what a good guy. So, you know so who's far, also a good guy? Wonder Woman. Who's yes. not a guy. Thank, thank, thank guy you for all. bringing it back from the John Stewart minute right after the <laughs> Trump Jr. minute. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so like what was like really lame to me is that like pretty soon after we meet this like really cool mentor figure like she just is like she's immortal but she's also dead. Well, she basically her just, soul gets stolen. Her or something. soul gets like ripped apart. Yeah, basically, yeah, and she just gets like a hit on pause. She gets paused. She get kind of like gets that like Doctor Strange thing where she they like poom you and like, your soul separates from your body for a minute. Yeah, yeah. but like also forever. I got a question for you guys. Okay. So. This is not, it's a good question. Okay. okay. Don't give me those looks. All right. <laughs> it's a good question. Okay. Al now, Chippy. Al I wasn't, Chippy. I wasn't on board until you as assured me it was a good question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Hippolyta is talking to, you know, Wonder Woman. Yeah. And yep. she's talking about her and she's like, she is my true dot, dot, dot friend. And I was like, oh, do you think they bang? Oh, they, they definitely got to be banging, right? Except, I except then later, uh, Antiope, Antiope, and a Pope. The anti-pope. An the anti-pope. Anti 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 yeah, is the correct pronunciation. <laughs> I think kinda, Antiope is. Kind of implies like they all share the same father or something. So what do you guys take? Um, that's Are they banging and is it incest? Good uh, point. Uh, I'm going to say no to the incest just because well, I... That the media is... The market is saturated with incest. Too much incest, We need a people. fucking break. We are literally. all Zeus's children. So... So... Um, we're so, all doing incest. It's so facto... <laughs> Every sex is incest. Uh, but are so, they banging them? I guess. I mean, I have to assume on on Themyscira, that's, yes. Yeah. There's not enough sex going on on this island, you know? You I think mean, they'd all be like They banging. just don't show it. This is like an all-ages book. 
Mm. Um, kids, I think kids need to learn about sex. I just okay? want to take it take it back. Okay. Are we having no. this conversation because it's an island of ladies? Uh huh. You know what? We've never had this conversation about like the Justice League. Justice they're League all has hanging out all the fucking. time. Yeah. They're they're, they're doing in space. each other. Everyone is exactly. banging except for Batman, who just like hangs out in his room and like hears everyone. Just jerks banging. off so hard. Yeah. 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 Basically. And then cries. He's got like a pillow waifu, like one of those things. It's just it's Catwoman. Poison Ivy. Oh yeah. yeah. Poison it's Poison Ivy. Ivy on one side and Catwoman yeah. on the other side. But I think it's par- his parents on both sides, guys. He's not having sex with it. He's just holding it and crying. Oh my okay. God. That's fair. That's so sad. Wow. So I do think that they if there was banging going on, I don't I think it's like a virtue of her just being immortal and like you would eventually fuck everyone. Oh, that's true. If you were immortal, sure, that's probably and you true. live for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You know, yeah. especially the other there's immortals. Only, there's a limited amount of people on the island. So. I was just curious. Right. There, there seemed to be like a lack of romance entirely on the island, except for that. And I was no, wondering. No, they they referenced it. There was like, um, there was like, she talked about like she'd been to lots of weddings. Oh, sure. that's true. And it was like <laughs> I've been to lots of weddings. It's just. Um, it's not about it's about the story is about like punching in identity, not fucking. Yeah. But yeah. then Steve Trevor comes in the mix. Oh, oh. okay, okay. Although I, I need to say okay. this is very confusing for me. Okay. Having a blonde Steve sure. in World War Two. Okay. That's not Captain America. He like seems okay. I yeah. know he is not. I know this is in the DC universe, but even seeing the Wonder Woman movie, which I admit I was pretty stoned for, it took me like <laughs> half the movie to be like, oh, that's not Captain America. But it's a blonde Steve. In the movie, it's also a Chris, which uh-huh. all the Chris's look the same to here's, me. Here's how I, I separate uh, Steve Trevor and Steve Rogers. Okay. Yeah, um, and they both have first name, two first name Steves. Yeah. Come on. Uh, they, <laughs> they both have two, like, yeah, two first names. Yeah. Like, it's Steve Steve Rogers. Yeah. Like, very close. That was the only um, name in the 1940s. Steve. Yeah. Steve. You know, it was like, well, we got to name him Steve. Here's you the deal. Choice. Uh, Steve Rogers, uh, very cool, uh, the best, wholesome, nice. Steve Trevor, a drip. Uh, he's a, a loser. They, I don't do like he's him. not. He's just a normal guy. He's just a normal guy. Nothing going on. They do describe him as like a man of like pure heart or something. Whatever. <laughs> he's Whatever. lame. And it doesn't Whatever. seem like Diana is like actually interested in him romantically at all. Not it's really. She... Like here's this guy. I want to. I guess I want to protect him. He seems nice. I feel like yeah. if you'd never seen a person of the opposite gender, mm-hmm. that would be not the genders like the binary, whatever. Okay. But. Um, (laughs) but you would be that would be like aesthetically weird. Yeah, he said this is like a body that like just didn't look like anything you've ever seen before. Yeah, sure. You'd be like, where are your titties? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I get that, but also like, vagina looks all wrong. (laughs) Oh, you've got an Audi. (laughs) If you're gonna start, if you're gonna start uh, somewhere seeing a man, you might as well start at a low bar, which is Steve Trevor. Like wow. what? What's, you don't Burn like this guy? Steve Trevor. Again, he's a war hero, Tristan. He's a, he's a nothing. Well, he got shot down. He's, so he's, he's a, not exactly like a hero. Um, he, he's a, he got he got he is hit. a failure. He failed at his mission of not getting shot down. The wow. only reason he's and famous back is that to he Trump, came back huh? and got rescued. What? He got yeah. The only reason he's famous in the story, in the world of the story, it's is because like, like he yeah, came back. yeah, and like that's another thing. Like he didn't get rescued, or he didn't save himself. Wonder Woman rescued him, and he's getting all the credit. And then Poseidon kind of helped. Yeah. Poseidon did help. Poseidon, okay, that's Poseidon right. Poseidon, was Poseidon in there. he was. He was we're not getting uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves because before that, basically, uh, I got something that like builds on that. You okay. know, <laughs> no, let's let's get <laughs> it all out of the, the way. Builds on that. Okay, I don't want to yeah. talk about the story. You know, like it's all World War Two, Steve's. <laughs> But like it made sense in the movie, change over World War One because there's this darkness hitting the island and everything. It's like, oh no, because war is happening for the first time. Sure. It's like, this is not the first oh, war. Is it? This is, is not the first world is, war. This is World War Two. It's World War Two. What was I mean, that it's not smoke of hate like, before? Where yeah, where was everyone during like you know Rome burning down? And, yeah, and there were multiple Genghis genocides. Ca- Genghis happening. Khan. And yeah, and everything. Apparently, I mean, I mean, the weapons in the world wars were. Pretty bad. Okay, I can name yeah. name one weapon in World War Two that was really bad. Mm. Name two, maybe. They didn't. That was pre. <laughs> they they didn't nuke anyone yet in this. Yeah, it's uh, nineteen forty four. It's nineteen forty four. We don't find out that that out yet because first they have to have like a contest of champions to find out Hippolyta's <laughs> champion, which is like 
also Zeus's champion because the people who uh, murdered Al were, I think it was like followers of Hades and Ares and Ares. Yeah, they yeah, teamed up. Hades they teamed and up. Ares were teamed, teamed up. up. Yeah, I loved how the Hades priestess was just like so tired, yeah, looking. really, yeah. really <laughs> exhausted, <laughs> really like ginger goth. Uh, yeah, very much so. yeah, like a very fragile goth mm-hmm. who was just like twitchy. Kind yeah, of. we didn't we didn't get enough time with them really. Yeah, to, to like give them an impression. There's also another villain later in the story. Uh, we don't get enough time with uh, him either. It, it feels like the the focus is really on uh, the protagonists of the, yeah. and the side characters, especially. Um, so basically, more or less, what happens is uh diana pulls a robin hood basically and like wears a wears a mask or or a helmet so she can Mm -hmm. become the champion she gets all the wonder woman gear from that that's like the prize you get yeah and then um basically didn't her mom just give her all that her mom gave her the her mom gave her all that one for her mission oh i i see i guess the the prize was steve trevor's life yeah right of course but there was another thing as well because a bunch of other people get to be the champions you get the powers of like the gods a bunch of other people during the the fight to become the champion like kind of tried to intervene yeah like like the bad guys like tried to like team up to Mm -hmm. like screw over Mm -hmm. yeah the main champion yeah well yeah i'm getting my (laughs) wires crossed a little bit this book is very episodic because it was released in digital form and um this is a webcomic released as a released (laughs) as a webcomic and the the format is very different a lot of the uh the pictures and panels that we have uh, for today are in this kind of like four by three square format. And that's because um, on the page, a comic book page is like tall, yeah. but like basically every digital page is like cut in half. So it like mm. reads very easily on your, on a screen mm. or a tablet or a laptop or whatnot. Sure. And so then they kind of like smoosh them together and they do a pretty good job of it. I think I had no idea, uh, but it does like, I think it does like as someone Who's read a lot of comic books? Uh, I don't know if you yeah. know. Uh, it does like when there's <laughs> a lot of read. when there's a lot of text uh, and yeah, words right. on the screen, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And I think that would be a little bit easier to read digitally, the way that it was seemingly intended, uh-huh. uh, like bit by bit, and then uh, as opposed to having it all on the all on the page all at once is kind of uh, a little disorienting here and there. But they do a really good job. There's another panel later that I'll get to that they do a really neat job of an even kind of improve for the page format as opposed to the digital format uh but m- you know moving that aside for a minute basically uh wonder woman ends up in america after being helped by poseidon she goes on her so mission gives her a little shove yeah she gives her a little shove uh and she kind of ends up in boston i think it is Boston. She, outside of Boston. In outside. Boston Harbor. Right, right. Like yeah. outside of Boston a little ways, where she meets the nicest woman in the world. The nicest old lady. I'm old. Here's a cookie. And a, this flag. Come on. You gotta do old lady with a Boston accent, though. Ah! Mark Wahlberg. A, Mark Wahlberg. Here's a wicked cookie for you. There we go. Park your car over there, you fucking Wonder Woman. There we go. <laughs> I'm Great. just talking like Terrence and Philip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's Canadian Boston. Yeah. Ah, uh, Bostonians. Uh, we're up north. Th- that is like important for Wonder Woman uh, to have her first experience with America be like positive. So she like basically learns that like, hey, you know, there's a lot of like terrible shit in the world. There's World War II. But it's also nice old people uh, who are almost certainly racist. In 1944. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was going to say. Like, Boston <laughs> today is super <laughs> racist. So, like... Yeah, I mean... Yeah, good... <laughs> really that's, that's, really that's, roasting these old people. Yeah, really roasting these old, these old people who were very nice. <laughs> they would have um, really been like, you daddy Greek fuck, get out of my house. <laughs> and was there an no. anti-Greek sentiment back then? I don't know. <laughs> History of racism. I don't know. I've been waiting to to get to Etta Candy uh, so far yeah, because she shows character. up. She's a huge character. She's like this, almost like the second lead in the book because yeah. like in the movie, Etta Candy is like kind of like Wonder Woman's sidekick who like kind of like like sits, like stands next to her like while she's like like trying on dresses and stuff like that. Yeah. And I like have trench coats. no memory of her in the movie. It's Lucy Davis it's from The Office. She was British Pam. She, okay. She kind of helps them, uh, her like a, kind of assimilate into society for a little bit. Like the ice cream scene. All right. Again. I mean. 
She's not like a big part of the movie. I remember from Kong. that movie being confused about Chris Pine and then them fighting on a tower at the end mm-hmm. and it was nighttime. And yeah. that's it. Oh, and Robin Wright being She's pretty fucking cool. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's but, it. But anyway, Eddie, 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 Eddie Candy. Eddie Candy is a much, more, it much less of a, 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 like a sidekick character and more yeah, of like a mutual like, friend. Just a kick. Yeah. She's just a kick. Yeah. She's uh, she's uh, a very boisterous, confident. Yeah. Um, she's got like her own issues and problems and enemies uh, in, in the book, and her like desires, she's, her backstory, just like all the things you'd want from a, a fully fleshed out an, character, an actual character, yeah. and that, that becomes uh, friends with Wonder Woman, and Wonder <laughs> Woman is like very like it's very it's a very nice dynamic they have. Because Wonder Woman's very stoic and like kind of humorless a lot of the time. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. she has like a few like very dry one-liners, but like for the most part, uh, it's nice to have someone to like bounce off of her. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there's a little more energy kind of and verve and life. Stiff, yeah. yeah, and it makes sense that um, uh, you know, there's a more energetic character because just Wonder Woman herself as a character it doesn't make sense for her to be like very quippy. And uh, no. and you know in the I'll movie they they wasted all those quips <laughs> in the movie they wasted all those that. quips on on Steve Trevor so and they wasted it all so yeah, yeah. really hate Steve Trevor really, ri- really I, ripping on Steve Trevor today I mean someone's got to because it's uh, true too many pro Steve Trevor types out there yes exactly a lot of S- Steve Trevor stands <laughs> but as much as we hate Steve Trevor I get apparently. I love Etta Candy so much. She's like great. this character Etta came on, I was like, yes, she's so, I love to see like a short, thick, like sassy lady who's doing it for herself. I just loved, I loved her. Yeah, and and you I just, was like, you could identified. Read, like, she's very charming. She's very funny. She's very cool. Like, yeah. she's great. Yeah, I loved her. And then she was like, makeover time. Yeah, they she do does that. That's fun. Yeah, I that love is. a makeover. And it never really happened. Until she was like badass makeover. Yeah, it's funny the way that like they keep winking towards things. Like when she first says she's going to like give Wonder Woman a big makeover, I kind of expected her to have the classic Wonder Woman outfit. And then like, no, she picked this weird dress with like <laughs> horses on it or yeah. something. Uh, and then you know, it then immediately goes into like the Perry White cameo, which is like, oh, right, it's, yeah. it's this guy Perry is it gonna be Perry White. Yeah, it's Perry White. Kristen didn't like Perry White. Very, it's it's a very weird. Like, there's another cameo as well because oh, the they, other cameo is my favorite. <laughs> Who's Perry White? He's the newspaper editor who owns uh, like the Daily Planet. Oh right, okay. It was uh, Lawrence Fishburne in uh, The Man of Steel slash yeah. uh, who kept Batman making Clark Superman. like cover local football games instead of the masked vigilante murdering people. <laughs> <laughs> like, no one cares about that. I want you to cover this local football case. So yeah, there are like these like very tenuous like connections to the wider DC universe. Yeah, that they don't they don't overplay their hand that way. That because it is Wonder Woman's origin story. It's not like like the Golden Age Superman showing up and like helping out yeah. or like Batman or or whatnot. It's just like hey, she exists in this world and like later these people might show up as well. Yeah, it's like fun. It weeks. is a shared universe, but it's definitely her story still. Yeah. And she has like this kind of like connection, like almost like this Voldemort, like Harry Potter, like burning sensation. Yeah. Whenever she <laughs> thinks and sees the Duke of Deception, who is what a name, who is like the champion of Ares and Hades. Yeah. And uh, we only see him in like almost like a National Enquirer perspective. He's like next to the Sasquatch and like a bunch of like like bullshit rumors. She's just like, I need to go to Europe because of this specific well, newspaper she talks article. to Perry White and he, she knows he's legit. Mm-hmm. Well, she sees the uh his li- his like symbol thing. It's mm-hmm. like magic locket. Beth- oh, see, this yeah. is a she was like okay. I'll just say it but I don't know how to say it. Bath bath Bathalus. Bathalus. Balthius. She stole the uh the bath salts. The bath he salts stole, from the He's got the bath bomb. red bath bomb <laughs> from Lush. Uh-huh. It smells great. Uh-huh. It's a little overpriced, Check. but it's worth it. Check. Nice I gift. You gotta treat yourself sometimes. You, know? you gotta treat yourself by taking a magical gem, which is the frozen heart of a titan. Yeah, that is powered by hate. Powered by hate, mm-hmm. as are we all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was actually the heart of the ocean uh, in uh, yeah. Titanic. Actually. Yeah, powered by hate. Powered That's by why hate. they had to kill all those people to like, <laughs> power it. Exactly. That's what happened. It's Rose, an infinity well, stone. Kind of That's why too. Rose didn't have any room on that door. Uh, out on the well, water, she, she didn't have any room one in her more. heart. Yeah, okay. So just bad at balancing. Yeah. 
Uh, so she yeah. basically goes to Europe with Etta Candy. Etta Candy is like doing some like USO show type stuff. Well, she and deci- she decides to. Yeah. She oh did. yeah. Like just they like, didn't let's hire her go for to that. the yeah. war. Yeah. yeah. Like, let's well, all go. We can do this. They go to France, which is like in the midst of like like Normandy just happened. Yeah, Norm- <laughs> Normandy just, just happened. Just happened. It just happened, and they run into they run into Steve Trevor uh, there again, who doesn't remember anything because like that's part of the rules in this book specifically is that you don't remember yourself on the island and you don't remember when you leave you'll you, it's just like super amnesia that's deeply terrifying to me you think so yeah i what? think that's so scary just like something that you can't remember that's like ter- uh, a terrifying thought. well he doesn't know that yeah. he doesn't remember but he does because he, he feels he a sense sure and he's like oh i remember this horse with wings and this lady with beautiful mm-hmm. raven hair <laughs> and the beach it's almost it's almost like uh that scene in the little mermaid like when Eric wakes Fully. up on the bed, on the beach. Fully. Eric also was Steve Trevor. Let's be let's be real. But he oh, plays the flute. Yeah. So he plays. The That's kind of like a nice touch. He plays the flute. Uh, he prints Eric in in Little Mermaid, and I will will <laughs> say wah, this wah, about wah. bitch. I'm a mermaid. Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's an inside joke of something we did not discuss in this show, but beforehand. But uh, now, now I can't talk about oh, Prince Eric wearing a cape and playing a flute on a moonlit night. And uh, yeah, that's a kind of a, that's a weird touch. Like Steve Trevor would never be that interesting. Like no, that's it's true. not like a cool thing. But it's like, well, oof, well that's weird. for playing him. Playing the flute on a moonlit night sounds like a very cool thing. With a cape, yeah, it's also cool. wearing capes. Yeah, you know, and he has like that weird little butler man is his friend. Oh yeah, his like uh what's his name like Snodgrass or something. He's like Yeah, I think it might be. He also has a very good dog as well. He does have oh, a good dog. Yeah. Yeah, so, how I mean, dare you? Re- Steve Fred, Trevor doesn't have any kind of dog. Yeah, that's true. Wait, he's just a fucking like Brooklyn bro. He's like his personality is like I'm a musician and I have a dog. That's not a personality. <laughs> and he only wants to hang out with women who don't talk at all. So Ugh. Nice. Now that's a Burn personality. Brooklyn. Uh, something that I did want to talk about during this Steve Trevor scene in particular, and like it's throughout the book, is that like we spent a lot of time out of uh, water, Wonder Woman. like the Little Mermaid. Out, we spent a lot of time out of the water, like the Little it's Mermaid. Cool we she also gets spent legs. Uh, a lot of time out of uh, Wonder Woman costume. She didn't get to costume until like maybe two thirds of the way through the book. Yeah, she yeah. desecrated but a flag. How dare the, she? All of the <laughs> something that stood out to me was all of the like. Uh, period clothing and the outfits and stuff yeah. were all like very nice. They're all like super cool. They're unique. Uh, Wonder Woman has different uh, clothing on from scene to scene. She like, puts on a military outfit and looks kind of cool. A one military point. Out- oh, hell outfit, yeah. pretty cool. When she's got look. her Greek. I love the all white Wonder Woman with like the. Ugh, oh, I mean when she has like amazing. the actual like, like military outfit on. That looks go. cool too. Like, That's a cool look with the sandals under like, it. Yeah, as you still can see hints of all the stuff. Yeah. Like That's yeah. pretty cool. Golden that, camo. Yeah. The, that all stood out to me because there's so much emphasis all the time put on superhero costumes. When they change, like that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Like there's like different Batman outfits, different Spider Man outfits, and everything like that. But you don't really pay attention to different like c- civilian, like regular identity outfits. Mm-hmm. But like this book like really puts a lot of effort and thought into that and I think it makes it uh, stand out a lot. It's just something yeah. I really it's, enjoy. it's good. I never noticed what Peter Parker is wearing. It's that bow tie from uh, the Steve Ditko years. Oh, like <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Like, like the ultra nerd version. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah the best. that's my Spider Man. <laughs> I love it. Like, love giant like glasses, eating yeah. weed cakes. <laughs> Get bullied. Get wrecked, nerd. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so Wonder Woman's in Europe to uh, basically fight the forces of evil. So she, naturally, she fights a bunch of Nazis. She goes out and she wears some of the uh, gifts from her mom. But she also wears like a man's like a uh, uniform, like helmet and everything like that. So she has the bands and stuff, but also like this like like olive uh like like fatigues, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's a very cool scene where she's just out there just like beating the shit out. Just almost like that Captain America scene in the first Avenger, where he like basically has that montage of like fighting like, the war, fight. killing the Nazis. <laughs> fighting and the war, then Red Skull drives up in his car like, oh, he's mad. <laughs> he was like out for a drive, I guess. He wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's exactly what happens. The Duke of Deception drives his car and goes. Ah. He shakes his fist. Uh, I loved the the art when she was out fighting the Nazis, which I'm always a big fan of. Whatever Nazis get fought, mm-hmm. um, and I mean, not to be controversial or anything, but 
Uh, That's very political of you. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> but I loved all of the, it was so cinematic. Like this yeah. whole book was so yeah. cinematic in the most satisfying way. And like the you, the movement of the characters, mm -hmm. I, I just loved. And you could like feel the wind. And like when Etta Candy's like snapping and being sassy, you can like, See, I could like feel her jiggling through the page, and I just really, <laughs> really loved it. All right, all right, really okay. loved um, the art in this book so much, and specifically in the scene where Wonder Woman's like taking off in the in the fatigues. Yeah, yeah, it's real yeah cool. exactly. Yeah, uh, and uh, finally, after some adventures, Etta Candy sets her up with some because they at some point they Etta Candy gets like a big like download of what has happened, and she's like, okay, I believe all of this. I believe yeah. all of this is There's real. It's like a nice, big, like, okay, enough. Some I saw you fly. Just tell me what's going on. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. okay, cool. This is great. Great. Here you go. Here's the classic Wonder Woman outfit. Uh, we are going to rip apart an American flag. We're going to break the law and desecrate the flag. How dare they? How dare they? You're also not supposed to have the flag on, like, paper plates or, like, a shirt. Mm -hmm. I use it as... Technically. <laughs> what's I that? say I use it as toilet paper. <laughs> That's, it can't be good for through, your pipe. I just have a big pile of flags in my bathroom. <laughs> They're all like the linen. <laughs> Jamming them down the toilet. My toilet is constantly clogged. Andrew's announcing his uh, Senate <laughs> bid today as well. My bathroom is such a mess. It's not good. It's not a good way to do business. <laughs> To do business. No. <laughs> That's it's what I'm going to say next time I have to take a shit. Covered flags everywhere. I got I to gotta go do some business. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Terrible. Uh, anyways. So, so there is a point where um, the costume she... looks great. The costume, <laughs> the costume looks, very looks good. great. Oh, uh, about the costume. I, I love the way that I didn't fully know like the backstory about her powers to this extent. And sure. like that she is a very gifted warrior and like has trained her entire life and loves battle as well. But like each individual artifact like is imbued with the power of a different sure. god. Yeah. It was so yeah. fucking it's very cool. Shazammy, you know? Like where each letter of his name was a different god. <sighs> Oh. Yeah. Shazam? Oh, yeah. We're, not, what was we're it? talking about a much better story than Shazam. Yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like the each like the bunch of god things. Yeah, god it's things. It's cool that in this universe there is a one two, true religion. <laughs> like Christians are wrong in this world. It's the Greek pantheon. Yeah, like that's it. They're establishing like, hey, if you're not worshiping the Greek gods, you're wrong. Well, guess, they kind of have that in Marvel too, except it's the they're like Asgard. aliens though. They're like specifically not that's, gods, right? That's the Marvel. That's gods? the Marvel Cinematic Universe. They're aliens in the Marvel like they comics. Are? It's closer to gods. But oh, they wow. also have Ares and shit in the Marvel. Yes. Universe. Yeah, they have Hercules too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think Marvel Universe is too consistent. Tristan, what are your thoughts? Um, <laughs> I don't know. That that just makes me think about um, uh, like how like like Star Wars and like Game of Thrones. They have these religions that have like. Provable, like actual effects. Yeah, they the are implications of like implications that what what people believe is correct because it's you know in Star Wars the Force is ca called like, this hokey old religion, but then he gets choked out by the hokey old religion. Right. So like, oh, yeah. uh, this is provably correct. And there's um, a shadow all, baby in Game of Thrones. This is a shadow baby. Remember that shadow baby. I remember the shadow How's he doing baby. These days, you think? Um, He's good. But he grew up big and strong. He's well, got he, a co-op in uh, Dorne. <laughs> he moved to Dorne because that's clearly, smart. That's Dorne's the like, only place to live. Cool. It's kind of the uh, like the Brooklyn of Game of Thrones. I'd For say. sure, Dorne? it's like the Gowanus. Yeah, Dorne. Yeah, I know. I know. I know what you're saying. It's like but, Greenpoint, but everyone just forgot about it, right? No, and there's just, a prince. Just now. like Greenpoint. Wow, burn on Greenpoint. Burn. Wow, burn, burn. Every, anyway, uh, <laughs> Wonder Woman is basically like wrecked and defeated by the Duke of Deception. Get wrecked, yeah. nerd. Yeah, and, and she <laughs> rejects uh, the 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 worthiness of uh, Zeus. Zeus. Basically, wait, when she when she's defeated, she goes into like this dream state, and Zeus is like, "Hey, um, you you want to continue like being my champion? I'll give you another chance. Uh, you know, take all these gifts, also destroy the Earth." And wreck it, of, <laughs> just ruin it of all life. We're gonna cleanse it. We're gonna start over, and you're gonna be like the the, the boss queen of everything. It's like when IT tells you, like, just turn it off and turn it back on. Yeah, and so, <laughs> and uh, you know, she thinks about like her friends. She thinks about the, the people that she's met and defended. She thinks about the bad things, but also the good as well. And she figures like, no, this world's worth saving. And so, like, 
Zeus is like, fine, you don't get any powers. Zip. Yep. So all she's powers. just like, all of her, all of her goodies away. are depowered. She's, she's, she's now just like kind of, kind of regular. And that's like another well, episode. Like, she's like a super strong Amazonian. But like, yeah, without additional powers. Like, yeah. Now she's just woman, still very powerful. <laughs> yeah. She's not like, like the, just her? the, just like the strongest woman alive. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Uh, over, overrated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Without, without, if you can't block bullets with your wrists, like, why even bother? That's true. That's true. That's uh, really specific. Like, I mean, you can't really aim carefully. Now she's just as strong as like Batman, I guess. Yeah. Uh, speak. And speaking of Batman, we get a little cameo from a very young, sprightly Alfred Pennyworth. Yeah, who's acting like what? Oliver? Who's acting like? He's got big buck oh teeth. Oh my god! He was that's the little, who that fucking he was? says that little kid. Oh, I'm Alfred Pennyworth. Oh Who'll my help god! Ya? I. Forgot I, that Alfred's last name is Pennyworth. <laughs> so you did. You just saw this sprightly little child. I, yeah, I the was full just like, first and what last name. The fuck is this? I was like, who is this bucktooth fucking weirdo? <laughs> it's Alfred. It's Backstage, the classic, like looking up people's panties. I like how yeah. em- enterprising he was. Yeah, I like they're making him just some big weirdo. And yeah, I think like oh, well, the he's pervy old. little kid. Oh, Batman's best friend and father <laughs> figure and butler. Yeah. <laughs> Someday I'll help a bat vigilante. I will. <laughs> I'll be now. his. I'll be his foster parent and also his employee. Andrew, you have an amazing Cockney accent. <laughs> Oi! <laughs> oh, there it is. Oi! I don't know. Well, <laughs> it's very funny that Alfred is. I think it's the best thing in the world that he's his dad, but also his employee. Like Batman can fire his dad. Hell yeah! That's cool. Hell yeah! Batman has the best life. He shouldn't be sad. Yeah. Imagine being able to fire your What do you dad. have to be sad about, Batman? Nothing. Nothing. You're rich and you have a fireable dad. And you got fucking great arms. Oh, dude. His arms? Very good. I'd let him straight. Good hair? Me. Huh? Yeah. Yep. What? Hmm? Who? Okay. What are we talking uh, about? So at some point, Wonder Woman kind of like feels like her Voldemort burning about the Duke of Deception, like kind of like figures out where he is. She should really get that yeah, checked she, out. Yeah. She a little penis, about, round of penicillin. Be, clear that right up. That could be like a cyst, like a brain cyst or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a she really is mortal, more like so. a brain sister. Am I right? Wonder Woman. What? Yeah. What? No, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So basically, uh, uh, she and Etta and like the backup gang of girls, the holiday, girls. yeah, the fucking holiday girls, yeah. Okay, they're they're, they're all there into World War Two. Yeah, like, hey, I we're love here it. at World War Two. Yeah, and they just running around, and they steal an experimental plane uh, and, to fly over there. And they were yeah. like, "Oh, we've been training. Yeah, we're like all good at fighting now." Yeah. yeah. Well, there is That's a cool. there's a scene earlier where they're like, "Hey, um, they tried to steal like a plane or like another vehicle, and they they stole a it. tank. They crashed a tank. They crashed a tank. Oh yeah. Remember? So they so they kind of set up their uh, I guess willingness to like." operate like heavy machinery and, <laughs> and vehicles early on. That's something that this book doesn't do a great job of is investigating the horror of war. Of yeah. total all consuming warfare. They there, kinda glossed over it a little bit. That that is something yeah. that the Wonder Woman movie like addresses a bit more than this. Because there are scenes that are very reminiscent of the movie in this, this book came out a little bit before. I don't know. There is a scene like uh, with like when she's like fighting Nazis, like in a in a small town in a tower, and like it kind of reminded me of that big like set and piece she's scene, hopping around and like she's sliding hopping around, on the ground, and sliding on the ground, going through oh, walls yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. It kind of reminded me of that bit in the movie, but like this was like eighteen months before the movie or so. Huh. Uh, so I don't I don't know if like she the, doesn't email really Batman up. at all in this one. She doesn't email Batman. Don't she emails Batman. <laughs> She um, has Batman's email, and he probably gets like yeah. a buzz on his phone. He's like, "Oh, Wonder Woman's email." Oh, it's my me. backup like, Gmail yeah. account. <laughs> <laughs> this is a throwaway account. <laughs> <laughs> this is the account that I use when I order shit from Wayfair. Yeah, How do you get this? <laughs> like they did Batman getting the He's like, "Oh, a new episode what's, of This Is Us today." What's Batman's email address? You think he's still using like a Hotmail or yeah. Sad Boy Sixty Nine? I bet. I <laughs> bet Alfred ask, set him up. Is it an? Yes, yeah, an Ask Jeeves it's account. Got, he's oh well, yeah, because he's like, I have a butler. Like well, <laughs> it sounds good. All right, <laughs> sounds good. I I trust oh, if I want to fire my email, I can. He probably yeah. He just came up to Alfred and like, hey, check it out, man. It's you. It's you here. I'm gonna get this email. And I'm gonna like, ask Jeeves, yeah. not Alfred. I don't need you anymore. You're I got a website. Sleep, you piece of shit. <laughs> I mean, this website's my dad now. 
<laughs> so, you know. This uh, website's my dad now. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know like where we're going with this, but... <laughs> no, no. I in the, in the story, all, do. all the okay. ladies like steal the invisible plane. Yeah, they gotta stop. Here's the thing. It's called Project Titan. Okay. That's the Nazi plane. It's called Project Titan because they're gonna resurrect a Titan. Yeah. I think yeah. it's great because it's it'd be like... a good code name. Yeah, it's like... It's like Straight if they called forward. the Manhattan Project like Operation Nuke. I think that's good. That's pretty I don't good. know. I got nothing else. Uh, you guys can continue. No. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Thanks for for stopping us dead in our tracks for that. That's very. That's important. <laughs> I did enjoy that. Like the invisible plane is like one of the goofiest aspects of Wonder Woman in general. Sure. Like uh, the invisible jet is just like. Always in like any media that you see the invisible jet in, it's always like her driving it, and you can kind of see like an outline of the plane, and then you can see her yeah. like full body. Yeah, she is not covered. And, at and, it, all. and there's like so there's no point to the invisible plane basically. No, it's just this woman. Going, it's, uh, like, it's it's very funny. Well, I mean, on like radar or something. Sure. I don't really know how radar works. Right. <laughs> Guess what? But um, she would just look <laughs> like a big heads. goose or something, right? Sure. <laughs> but what I do like, think, but she'd be includes, like in a sitting position. Just well, it's not that detailed. It was World War II. They didn't have like fantastic. Oh, the, on the radar, you mean? Yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, that makes sense. And she's so far up, you can't see her. You're just like, oh, it's a goose. <laughs> There's geese everywhere. Yeah, fuck, so but many geese. This story did help it make sense for me in the context of the story, is because uh, I assume like when someone is piloting this this uh, craft, they have special clothing on that also mimics this invisibility. Oh, uh, okay. But they're sense. and they're all just wearing civilian clothes. So it makes sense that it's all yeah. invisible except for them. Yeah. I guess that kind of lines up and you get you get to have they didn't plan your that. invisible jet or invisible plane and also have the goofy, you know, visible people inside. Yes. Uh and so uh they they arrive they, the the invisible plane gets like shot up a little bit so it's like part invisible and part not. Yeah. That was a really cool scene. Like it reminded me, mm-hmm. made me think like this would be really cool in a movie or something. I would love oh, to maybe see they'll this do that movie. in uh, Wonder, Wonder Woman 1984. Oh, Steve Trevor returns. Steve Trevor uh, he's a he's a man out of time. I don't much like Steve uh, Rogers. Much like, yeah, much like all Steves. All yeah. Steves have to be in World War II mm-hmm. and then come to the present. Yeah, Rick Steves, uh, the travel author, wrote all of his books in 1943. And then just sort of uh, put the, release them. His estate releases them. Rick every few Steves. Yeah. Whoa, you're making references I don't get, man. Rick Steves is a, a pretty good tra- like a really big this travel guide. He's got he's got a TV he on show. Game of Thrones. Because if not, I probably okay. don't. Know. Never mind. Okay. <laughs> uh, so they get shot up, and like uh, there's like Steve Trevor shows up. There's uh, everyone's about to die, but then like Wonder Woman basically has like, her like big moment where it's like. Uh, I have my powers and everything back now because I believe in myself, kind of. Boo. Well, okay, no, she doesn't have any powers. First. She calls then, to the spirit. Th- then she, Gaia gives her powers. Except okay. she has a. Still, she has the power of her lasso because sure. that's yeah. like something that her mom that. made. Okay. Yeah. Which I did like that she was the one power. Is like truth is the real right. power. Right. Yeah. Which is a better moral than like believe in yourself. Yeah. How the magic he, rope. She does use that uh, to encircle the Duke of Deception and basically like show him that his brother is still alive. That was weird. I didn't know. Like I thought it just made you tell the truth, not like <laughs> see all truth. That I exists. guess. Well, it seems like a lot. Yeah, that's like I a, don't really need that. That's a big. That's a big good Honestly. rope they got there now. Because like if you just want to like, hey, I want to know what's going on, just tie yourself up on the rope and be like, well, that's what's going on. <laughs> that that okay. makes sense. Like let me catch up on the news. Yeah, exactly. Boop, 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 boop. A, yeah, just tie it around your waist like a belt. <laughs> well, it's about like, yourself, right? But you can't like know what's going on when the. In I'd the, like in to the know. Hey, world. that's like good for therapy though. You know? I super do not need to know all of like the hidden truths about myself. That doesn't sound like a fun time. Well, I mean, you know, it's not for everyone. Probably. You're a bad friend. Is my little brother alive or dead? I don't know. My brother, my little brother is alive. Oh, have you put a rope on lately? No, so. but I talked to him on the phone last night. Right. He had a tooth pulled. Oh. You doing Hope okay? He's doing okay. He's fine. Okay. Right. He he's just got a new puppy, so it's kind of a wash. Oh well, okay, he's good then. Yeah, he's good to go. Anyways, uh, Steve the- Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve Trevor. Ever, everyone lives and survives. And everyone's fine because Wonder Woman gets to fight the Titan, yep. which is like this huge uh, uh, monstrous thing. They keep calling it a manhunter. They, it's a manhunter. Manhunters are from the Green Lantern side of things. Mm-hmm. Basically, what happened was um, a bunch of. I, 
in the regular DC Comics continuity, I believe the guardians of the Oa, uh, Oa uh, created Manhunters to like patrol the galaxy before Green Lanterns. And right. basically what happened was they, they kind of like their programming like kind of like went berserk and they basically like took over a galaxy or a sector of the galaxy and basically like that's the Manhunter zone now. You don't go there because they destroyed everything and they they went bad. And the that's... Manhunter zone sounds like an amazing gay bar. <laughs> <laughs> I would fully go there. It's my it's my app. <laughs> that's one of the apps that went up to the farm is uh, the Manhunter <laughs> zone. All right. Uh, <laughs> So, but the, John Stewart's probably taking good care of it. Though. Yeah, I would so. hope so. I would hope so. Uh, so like the, the I mean, he's well, a Green Lantern. He is. See, it all ties together. Oh, the oh, John Stewart. Yeah, yeah, that's nice. all that makes sense. That does make sense. I do like uh, how we get to see like there's like a little Manhunter inside the big Manhunter. Yeah. Because like, she like that's how she defeats the Titan. Is in that his eye. She goes inside. She goes inside and like almost like mercy kills this like poor like thing that's like kind of like almost like three eyed Raven like yeah. into yeah. into this thing. Uh, and then uh, she saves the day, and uh, everything's fine. Yeah, everything more or less. Right. And we get some sort of like like hints to the future. Uh, Cheetah's like, gonna come out. Cheetah. Like, it seems like Cheetah. Uh, who is it that touches the um, basalts? It's Cheetah. It's it's, che- it's Priscilla Cheetah. Priscilla Rich. Who, yeah, she beca- She's becoming. She touches Cheetah. it. She com- oh. becomes consumed. She wakes up, and she gets like a cat eye, and that's like a that's like a hint. Yeah. Um, when you touch evil stones, you become cat. Yeah. she's played by Kristen Wiig, I think. Kristen Wiig's the, gonna play her, yeah, in the new movie, and that's exciting. Yeah, should be good. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so um, before we wrap it up uh, and, and share our final thoughts, I do want to get to our panel picks, which are you know uh, just sort of the uh, especially memorable or favorite moments that speak to us, uh, sort of encapsulate our feelings in a book, or just like very cool. I'll pick mine, which is like a just a really neat shot of Wonder Woman leaping into the night uh, with. Uh, both her fatigues and uh, some of the shining like bracelet and uh, yeah. accessories. Yeah, uh, such a cool shot. It's just it it's really just good. really neat, and it, it it almost made me disappointed when I got to the regular Wonder Woman outfit because it's like much less interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's a very golden age affair. It's very classic, but like all the other clothing up to that point had been like so cool. Just like not practical. Oh my god! No. If you've never you did on the Simpsons episode of uh, Table Pop, oh, but like top wearing kinda. something, wearing the a straps, strapless like, shirt I is crazy. Yeah. You can't do anything in that. Your titties flapping out <laughs> when you're trying to kill the Nazis. Well, and, like not even like the battle skirt, like in the movie where it's like leather, and so like maybe like it could deflect something. Shorts. It's just mm-hmm. like a cloth skirt. Or, uh, a G, uh, sh- sh- a skort that's mm-hmm. skort would be good. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Not practical. No. Well, maybe you, you know pants. the god of undergarments is like watching over her and, and just gets, keeping keep, everything keep, in place. keeps everything tight. You that's know, the like, real magic is yeah. like her like tape that she uses. <laughs> <to hold laughs> <it laughs> she invented I double think sided candy. Would know like, hey, you're gonna know that. I'll, I'll get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Eddie Candy's can. got the. She's got the tips. Yeah. Love that Eddie Candy. Uh, Andrew, what was your panel pick? Why are you giving that face? Uh, <laughs> Father is angry with us now. Is it because, okay. Papa Triste is mad. Hi- I was just like taking back and Hippolyta is like, oh, I'm sad. I don't got any babies and I want a baby. And she's like crying at the beach. Mm-hmm. And then like a baby just emerges from the sand. Mm-hmm. And that's like weird and cool. And like, it's a very interesting thing. But also if she would have kept crying or something or not noticed, that baby would have just drowned on the beach and she would not have noticed what was going on. That's also, it has a b- belly button, so that means it had an umbilical cord at some point that Gaia must have snipped. It was made in the image of her, maybe? I don't know. Maybe. I don't wow. know. Well, she's blonde. So. You think she, you really wanted wow. that baby to be like a Kyle XY situation? Yeah. Where she would lift the, the <laughs> belly button. Why are you giving it a belly Every, button? Yeah. That's the only thing. You made it out of clay. I'm glad What's I got to fit in a Kyle also, XY like, reference. Guy could have made it like a teenager or someone like oh little. God. He's got like a baby, like a newborn baby. That's a lot of responsibility. Wah, wah, wah. That's a lot Bitch, of, I'm a baby. Bitch, I'm a baby is what it first said. <laughs> that's what it implied, at least. Again. Anyways, that's my panel. No one gets that reference. <laughs> we talked about it's before the show. Everyone song. loves. It's Drake. I mean, he's probably okay. pretty okay. popular. All right. All right. That's fine. <laughs> I have to take your word Carolyn, for it. what was your panel pick? My panel pick was just this very cool shot of Wonder Woman and the Titan facing mm-hmm. off. I just yeah. thought it was so cool and cinematic. And she's like, she's like, she's got these big odds, but she's just one person and she can so much pressure, but she does it for her people, for mm-hmm. all people. It's very Shadow of the Colossus. 
Yeah, yeah, it did. It was very like, Shadow Colossus. Cool. Yeah, cool yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just love uh, the art in this so much, and it was very smooth. The whole story like really flowed. It was such a great read. It is yeah. nice to have like a lot of times like a lot on a lot of these ongoing stories we have like differing artists and a lot of the books we've read like have like different artists and anchors from issue to issue but having the same creative team like throughout like a like a pretty lengthy story like this is really nice gives it a nice cohesive feel yeah. mm-hmm. and I understand you know the nature of superhero comics especially it's like month to month you can't you like you know artists can't like work that fast sometimes it's just like a it's like a big deal but like maybe this digital format uh, aided that a little bit, and especially the closeness of the the physical and uh, you know marital closeness of the creative team also probably helped this uh, get done in a uh, in a speedy, uh, efficient, and uh, quality way. Yeah, they should just hire the XKCD guy to make every book. Okay, and yeah, just stick figures and like exactly. you can probably keep that guy going. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. You never coming. know. You know, he might need an inker. Oh, that's true. Water. Uh, yeah, exactly. You know. All of that stuff. It adds up. It adds up. Uh, so um, I, I think we all enjoyed this this book to to certain degrees. Carolyn, would you recommend this uh, book, The Legend of Wonder Woman? Highly recommend. Fun for all ages. Read it to your daughters. Read it to your sons. Mm-hmm. Read it for yourself. Etta Candy is an icon. Mm-hmm. Uh the it's just great all around. And I lo- I just loved the fucking story. I love magic. And like fantasy, and there was a healthy dose of dose yeah. of that in here. Not a lot of planeswalkers that I noticed. Not a lot of planeswalkers, but kind of the gods are kind of like planeswalkers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. Sure. Andrew. And there's a Pegasus in it. There That's is true. a Pegasus in it. We, we didn't touch it, touch on it too much. A big but. giant who's like fishing or something. Oh yeah, know. that was cool that too. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was very good. I re- I really recommend it if you like Wonder Woman. I mean, it's hard to know with comics where to start. Like yes. to really understand a character. Yes. And like this is like a very good introduction to Wonder Woman and like yeah. what she's all about. Yeah. Uh, and the art is nice and it's all just nice. Yeah. I mean, like nice things. I agree. It gives you a little bit more like than it's not just like rewatching the movie. There's a lot yeah. there's a lot more in Wonder Woman's childhood. There's a lot more, especially with the Greek pantheon. They like barely touch on any of that in the movie. Um it doesn't get into the horrors of war, as you mentioned, mm-hmm. but that might make it a little bit more accessible to kids, like uh, yeah, like younger kids uh, who are interested in a story and not interested in uh, mustard gas uh, or anything. What like kid that. doesn't love mustard gas? I mm. mean, who 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 among us? Who among us has not mixed bleach and ammonia uh, <laughs> from the cupboards? <laughs> <laughs> um, I felt I walked away from this book feeling like, you know, I'd never really had a. a I didn't give a shit about Wonder Woman, really, but walked away from this story really feeling like a sense of closeness and like ownership over the character. Like sure. this is now one of my characters that mm-hmm. I care about. Sure. And that was like, that's a beautiful gift. Yeah. yeah. It kind of stinks we don't get more of this specific Wonder Woman in this world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, I don't know if you can ever say like never as far as this stuff goes, but like I, I double checked and it doesn't seem like there, the volume two was like in the works. And there's some sketches you can find online of like some of the the villains and and stuff like that. But uh, maybe seems we like can broker peace between okay. the angry parties. You know, I maybe heard we can do that. that maybe volume that two that was just like super horny. It was just like raw dogging it with Steve Trevor the whole time. Wow, Wait, no who thanks. Raw dogging with Steve Trevor. Um, <laughs> Diana Prince. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Anyways. <laughs> wow. Speaking of uh, never anything Candy like that ever again. Uh, yeah. Her guy. Captain, whatever the captain's name was. And the other guy. Okay. Next. We've, next. Angered, we've angered father again. <laughs> Children. <laughs> <laughs> next Next time, uh, we are going to be reading uh, Miss Marvel, Volume 1, uh, No Normal. That's um, uh, G. Willow Wilson. Adrian Alfona, like the origin story of Miss Marvel. Uh, that should be another great time. We've been something we've been wanting to do for a while. If you'd like, you can read along. Uh, but until then, we will see you in the funny papers. Hey everyone, if you like this, be sure to check out dropout.tv. It's the best way to support Dorkly. Yeah, you can get this and other Dorkly shows a week er- early. Whoa. <laughs> and as well as a bunch of exclusives. Exclusives like Dimension 20, Paranoia, Troopers, 
they're all good. Go to dropout.tv for a free week trial. Do it. Cheers. Wink.